this is a street scene that I plan to sketch. I'm going to use this new Bastion pen. If you haven't seen my review of the pen, please see part one. I'll put a link in the description. And the Bastion pen has got this grey sketch ink from Reura and Klinger. Klinger <laughs> of Leipzig. I apologise for my German pronunciation. Some feedback from previous sketches saying you found it helpful if a, this is put in the top corner of the film, so I will try and do that. So I'm taking off that super long lid and I'm going to do a really loose sketch and then hopefully I will add some watercolour at the end. So I'm going to start, see I've already done something wrong, but the joy of this sort of loose sketching style is that if you put a wrong line in, it really doesn't matter. So it's going to be continuous line. And I'm starting in the distance with that small blue building and coming forward. There's a lovely A board here. I'm deliberately holding my pen quite a long way down so that it gives me a very loose, flexible line. My eye is skipping round the picture. Sorry, lost my train of thought there. Skipping round the picture and flowing round. And hey, if I've got some rather wibbly wobbly lines, it won't matter. Now, this is a grey ink. So the lines are not going to be as dark as you might anticipate. So just be aware of that. And I thought it would just be interesting to see what a grey brain can actually look like with the, so the lines aren't, aren't as dominant. I've not really used grey inks very much. So that door comes out there, square to the perspective of the building. I'm not sure whether I'm going to put that graffiti on or not. Uh, we might just catch a little of that lovely uh, tiled roof up here. Why I like this picture, and it's always worth thinking, you know, why do I like this picture? It could be that you're sitting on holiday in a cafe drinking a cafe au lait or a chocolat chaud and uh, you're, you're looking at this scene. Um, or it could be something that you've just seen and you, you rather liked. And the reason I like this was because of the electricity lines or phone lines that are going across really like those I just thought they were funny I have a thing about foreign electrics I think because they're often the thing that rather attracts me to a scene let's just see a chimney there So try not to get stuck in one particular place, just aim, oh there's a rather nice sign, sorry, sticking out there. Just aim to sort of let your eye flow over the scene. Don't think I'll put those people in. And you can edit things as you go along. You know, what, what do we need to put in to tell the story of this scene? What can we safely leave out? 
I like those sort of arches over the windows, so let's get those in for sure. And though I have said, oh, I'm doing a sort of continuous line, do you know what? It is my drawing. So if I want to take my line off, my pen off the page, I'm absolutely allowed to. But the joy of this sort of continuous line drawing is, well, one, it's fast. Two, it's a whole pile of fun. And three, the sort of continuous line implies there's a lot more detail there than actually is. So it's actually a very giving way of working. Always gets a bit bumpy while you're um, just going across the fold. Should we just come back here? So this Bastion pen, so I've done a full review in case you're interested and looking for a pen. It's got such a nice long grip, it encourages you to, to have a loose grip on it. it certainly makes that possible. Um, couldn't hold it further up really than that, it wouldn't be that comfortable after that. But uh, yeah, quite like how it's working. Let's put this little dormer window in, a bit of more roof line, there's Roof is important just because it sort of implies that something else is going on there. So I'll we'll come forward. We've got that pale blue house, and now this is sort of the palish green clapboard house. Rather liking. Is that a for sale sign? Not sure. Another sign sticking out here. Let's put that in there. And we'll might come back to that. And then we've got this is I like this sign here. I don't know whether that's a pub. It's got a man's face on. Well it wouldn't be a pub, would it, in rural France? don't know what it is but let's put its bits on and I think this is probably as far forward as I'm going to go to these an awning I think Lovely long sort of Georgian type windows. And some sort of railing here. And I think we'll Really get this line to sweep round. It's rather nice. And we'll have the gutter and we'll have a few cobblestones. Let's do some of that. Getting a little bit lost here. Ah, there we go. Ah, I haven't got steps, that's why I was confused. And I haven't put in this building, the sort of blue 
boarded building. So if we get some of that in with a big plate glass window and then there's a sort of cellar thing there that will join that on and then we'll come up here. I've got a couple of windows there. Oh, there's some strange sort of overhang. No idea what that's quite doing architecturally. But what we do want is to get that point here. And um, that just takes it right to the top of the paper, which I like. Are we going to get this balcony in? What do you reckon? Yeah, let's do a balcony. I'm not going to bother to do the precise pattern of the wrought iron. Do some twiddly bits, why not? And then we've got the supports of the balcony here. We've got the underside of the balcony there. And that support comes here. We've got window, I've got the window there. So you can see how I'm just sort of working round, putting in the things I like and want and leaving out when it all sort of becomes too much detail. I might just need to join this up. Something is a little bit missing, but let's just join that up and we'll be OK. I think what confused me was this sticky out bit there. I think it would be nice to lead our eye into the piece a bit more and to have some of these wonderful cobblestones in the front as well. I know there isn't a line down the middle but um, I've put that in as a little artistic whatnot to lead our eye through. I hope that will. And then again we've got some very wonky paving slabs, which I don't think would pass the health and safety test in the UK. And I'm actually going to curve them round just to sort of play round a bit there, because I think that's quite nice. This side, not so much. I think it needs something. There's some steps, I think they're going to be too complicated for me, so I'm not going to put those in. And say I've missed all the bicycles that are out at the front. I'm going to make some of these cobblestones smaller further away. Just going to encourage that curve round and that's where it disappears around the corner. Don't think we need an awful lot more than that at this point. Rather like that graffiti. Should we put that in? Just for a bit of yeah. Bit of fun. I bet the shop owner doesn't like that graffiti. What does it say? I'm not the one. Why do you graffiti in English when you're in France?
and I hope you're all shouting and screaming. What about the electric lines that you were talking about? I haven't put those in. So I'll put those in last. There's one and it's got this fabulous light in. And then there's a few. Where do they go from? So they go from that house to cross. And oh, there's one lower down. Where does that go from the balcony to this house? And I'm going to slightly make up one there because I think that's rather nice. So there's our loose quick sketch and why don't we zhuzh it up with a bit of watercolour. I've got a little set, these are actually a Derwent set from their line and wash which I've added a few of my favourite colours to. Given them a little spray, a little spritz with some clean water just to get them going and I am going to have a little bit of fun with some colour. I am going to go careful, not go too mad, simply because I want that little sign to stand out. The other thing I'd say is, I mean, this little sketchbook, say it's just a, uh, this little sketchbook is just a little moleskin, it's not a watercolour sketchbook so it can't take too much water before it sort of gets a little upset but we're just going to add a bit of colour to have some fun never know why I have to say that Derwent have made their colours so opaque in, in this set but they blooming well have let's bring some of that colour down and let it go for a bit of a wonder um do a bit of yellow over here that's way too strong but don't panic if you put on too much take it off And it will be fine. Areas of brightness on these signs just to bring them forward, I think. quite liked how that blue is making a little path down here and we've got the little blue I put in the graffiti so I'm going to add some texture to the front by a bit of splattering and just bring the tiniest smidge I reckon of blue into a couple of these windows just to tie some of that together think we fancy a bit of warmth in here I don't know having looked at it and thought no it feels just felt a bit hmm 
a bit. That's Oh, that's chirped it up a bit, hasn't it? And the colour is very much about your interpretation of the scene and how you feel about it. We could do this in, in very dark colours and it would, or very sombre colours, and it would have a totally different feel to it. It might feel like a lot more threatening. Whereas if you do quite cheery colours, feel more, more of a festival. At this point in your sketch you can when it's dry you can always go back in with with your pen and just put in a little more detail if you feel say that you know, I don't know the foreground needs to come forward or you want you know some of that sort of gutter detail over here so you can always go back in. It doesn't mean that you've you're finished. The other thing that is really nice to use are these. These are dual tipped watercolor pens. the The well known brand is Tombow's, but uh, these are a cheap version of Tombow. At one end, they've got a brush pen, and at the other they've got a bullet nib and they're transparent so say you want to put in a little bit of tone without adding more water to your picture which is really important when you if you were doing this in situ you can just use the brush pen end of things to darken some bits down and as I say, it doesn't add any extra water, no extra drying time, because if you're in a cooler climate, yeah, it takes forever for things to dry. Uh, so, for example, I might just put a little grey tone on those windows. And just on there. And that can be enough to add a little bit more interest and a little bit more depth really quick way so these sorts of pens and say this is a grey set which is useful um, and they do blend as well so say you put one in the wrong place you can blend it out with water depending on your paper of course Make some quite good stones, wouldn't they, as well? Just do something like that, and it just adds a bit more tonal variation. You could do that in a few colours. I want to go over the top because. The whole point of this was that it wasn't meant to be a fussy um, sketch, but it's particularly that just work that um, curb to be a bit darker. Final thing I might do just bring a bit of colour into that roof. So there's our very quick 
little sketch of somewhere in France and I still don't know where it is. We started with grey waterproof fountain pen ink in that bastion pen and the pen totally coped with that real sketchy style of, of drawing and in fact that very long grip there really facilitated having a loose sketching style because you can hold it far up in your hand. The ink dried almost immediately so when we put those watercolours on top nothing ran and we just had some fun with the colour and created a little texture and so forth. Then I showed you right at the end how you can use dual tip watercolour brush pens either Tombow or a cheaper equivalent to add tone to your sketch without adding the weight of extra water and that's a really nice way to combine all your materials. I hope that's encouraged you to get out and sketch from life and to use really loose sketching so that you can just enjoy having the pen play on the paper and capture the feel of a place.